So let's create an, our final public static void method called create array of calendars. And let's write a comment at the top explaining what this method is going to do, and then we'll explore the subtleties and look at some of the visualization as we, as we go. So our plan here is we're going to create an array of 12 calendars, 12 calendar objects. Each calendar is going to be initialized to the start of each month. So what I mean by that is we're going to have a calendar object for January 1st, 2019 and another calendar object for February 1st, 2019, and one for March 1st, 2019, and so on and, and so forth. One pitfall that we fall into when we're dealing with arrays of objects is that when we create an array of objects, each element is initialized to null. So creating an array of objects doesn't create any objects, right? When we create an array, we have in the computer's, we have a reference to a chunk of the computer's memory where we have room to store, let's say, 12 references to calendars, but we haven't created any calendars yet. Um, we have to explicitly, explicitly create new objects and assign to each element. <coughs> this, is, this is one of those subtleties that often causes trouble when we're dealing with arrays of objects. And the way this manifests itself is you run your code and you get a lot of null pointer exceptions because you remember to make a new array, but you didn't make any new objects and so you're trying to call methods on null references. So let's, but we still need to create the array. So here's the, let's create the array first. Um, same syntax as we've been using all week, but the type now is it's an array of Gregorian calendar objects. And I'm going to continue to encourage you that you, the name of your array variables should be in plural form. So since we have an array of calendar objects, I'm going to call my array variable calendars, plural. And I'm going to say it equals a new array of 12 references to Gregorian calendars. Cool. And I just want to really reinforce that every element in this array right now is, is null. So we're going to actually print out the array. So at this point, every element in the array has a value of null. And to prove it, we can do an enhanced for loop. We can still do enhanced for loops with arrays of objects. Gregorian calendar. And again, when you use your enhanced for loop, please don't use the local variable i in an enhanced for loop. i implies an index. There's no index here. Instead, use the singular form of your array variable. So I'm going to say for every calendar in calendars, and then I'll have my loop. By being particular with the singular and plural forms, I think this is going to help you avoid mistakes because when you're using the variable calendars, you're like, oh yeah, this is multiple calendars, this is the array. And when you use the variable calendar singular, you're like, this is a reference to one calendar. And we're just going to print it. So go ahead and type, compile, run this, and verify in the terminal that sure enough, we have an array of 12 elements, and the value of every element is null.
All right, I'm going to run it as well just to like demonstrate this, make sure we're on the same page. So 12 elements, all null. Excellent. All right. So now we can focus on the next step, which is we actually need to make new calendar objects. So now we are going to create a new calendar object and assign it to each element in the array. Now here we are modifying the value of an element in an array, so we have to use a regular for loop. We cannot use an enhanced for loop here. Here's the cool thing. Here's the connection I'd like you to, to think about and make with the code that we're about to write here. If you think back to your Cityscape lab, you may have needed to create, let's say, several window objects for a building. And you may have had variables window 1, window 2, window 3, window 4, maybe all the way up to window 12. Or maybe you needed to create several trees for your Cityscape. And you may have had 20 different tree variables. Tree 1, tree 2, tree 3, tree 4, right? Or even think back to the populate game method in the Game of Life lab that we did in the last unit. If in your populate game method you had a, or at least one version of it, you had a sophisticated pattern, you may have needed to create 30 live cells. You may have had 30 variables, rock 1, rock 2, rock 3, rock 30, and three lines of code to create the rock, create the location, and then add it to the grid. You may have had 90 lines of code to put 30 rocks into your grid. And the good news is you'll never have to do that again because now we can use arrays. So whether we're creating 12 calendar objects or 100 rocks or 2,000 trees for our cityscape, we can write a for loop with a statement in it and do it in like three lines of code. Okay? So that's a huge benefit to us moving forward. So let's write the for loop. So for int i equals 0, i is less than calendars.length, i++. plus plus. So that will iterate through every index within our array. And then we don't need to create a whole bunch of different variables. We'll just assign to the element at index i, oops, sorry, that's calendars, plural. We'll assign to the element at index i a reference to a new Gregorian calendar. And the constructor for a Gregorian calendar takes the year, the month. So I'm going to do i plus 1 because January is month number 1 in terms of the calendar. And 1, we set the first day of the month. And then I'm going to copy and paste the code that prints everything. And then we can compile and run this. There are many properties to a Gregorian calendar. You're going to have to scroll way to the right to actually see that the year is 2019 and the months are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, but go ahead, compile it, run this, scroll way to the right, and verify that we now have 12 different calendar objects in our array. All right, I'm going to run this as well, just so we can compare. Uh, all right, so there's the original 12 
elements that were null. Now we have 12 elements that are Gregorian calendars. And again, as I was saying, you got to really scroll to the right. And eventually we're going to see, oh, here's the day of the month. Where's the, ah, here we go. Year 2019, month 123, and so on and so forth. So this looks great. To help you visualize what's going on here, because this is there's a subtlety here that I want to make sure we appreciate. Um, when we first created our array of 12 references to calendar objects, it looks like the first screenshot here from the visualization. So um, calendars are variable. Its value, remember, is a reference to somewhere in the computer's memory where there is room for 12 references to calendar objects, and they all start as null. As that for loop we just wrote runs, and let's say when i is 0 and we create that first new calendar object, calendar still has the same reference to the same chunk of the computer's memory where there's room for 12 references, but the value of the element at index 0 is itself another reference to the calendar object located somewhere else in the computer's memory. So this is where things are getting a little bit more sophisticated in that we have a reference to an array of references to objects, right? So we have references to references. Um, having this mental model is going to dramatically help you understand how to manipulate these arrays of objects. So that's why I just want to give you the, the visualization of it um, in addition to the code. So, All right, so back to the code. There's one more thing I want to clarify um, that usually leads to, to confusion, and it relates to enhanced for loops. Um, so I want to start by reiterating that an enhanced for loop cannot modify the values of the elements in the array. The subtlety here is that often we don't stop and think deeply about what, what is the value of the elements in the array. Okay. So for in this example, the values of the elements in the array are references to calendars. So we cannot change, in the context of an enhanced for loop, we cannot change the values of any element. And in this specific example, we can't change any of the references. So we could not use an enhanced for loop to change the value, the reference stored in, uh, um, in a given element to refer to a different calendar object. That we cannot do an enhanced for loop. However, what we can do within the context of an enhanced for loop, we can call mutator methods which modify the properties of the referenced objects. So for example, we could call a mutator method that changes the day of the month of a given calendar object and change the properties of the object, but we're not changing the reference to the object. So we can definitely use enhanced for loops to change the objects. We just can't change the references to the objects. So let's, let's write a loop that does that just to make this a little bit more concrete because this, this subtle distinction is actually really important. So we can use an enhanced for loop so for each calendar in calendars and inside this enhanced for loop we can't change the reference within the array but I can totally use calendar because count the value of calendar is simply a reference to some object that is also being referred to by an element in the array. And I can call a mutator method like add. And the way the add method works is the we specify as the first argument to which property are we adding. So we're going to add to the, there's a static constant called day of month. So we're going to say we want to add two to the day of the month for the calendar object referenced by calendar. 
And then just to prove that this actually works and we've actually modified the properties of the object, copy and paste the enhanced for loop that prints all of those again. So type compile and run this, and then once again scroll far to the right and verify that instead of the day of the month being one, it should now be three for all 12 objects.